one of the men charged in connection to the murder of Mujay Dambaya is heading to trial. We are in court as investigators detail how they believe the suspects teamed up to kill her. The search continues tonight for a man who shot a driver right in front of a local school. Neighbors describe the moments that still have them on edge. Plus, an exclusive look at a major development project coming to downtown Kalamazoo. Their plans you'll see only on News Channel 3. Plus, local breaking news. You're watching News Channel 3, live at 6. A hearing in a perjury case reveals new information about the plot to kidnap and murder a local teenager. The alleged accomplice in the slaying of 16-year-old Mujay Dambaya faced a judge today. And News Channel 3's Rachel Glazer is live in Grand Rapids now, where investigators continue to unravel this very complicated case. Rachel. Yeah, Andy, that's right. It's kind of like a spider web that they're going through right now. But investigators tell us that it didn't cost Quinn James very much to hire an accomplice to help kill the young girl who accused him of rape. That sexual assault case was actually supposed to go to trial this week. But here in court today, police say that James went to an old friend, someone he met in prison decades ago, who put him in touch with Gerald Bennett. And together, the two planned and carried out a murder. In exchange for an old Chevy Caprice and some cash, investigators say Gerald Bennett helped Quinn James kill Mujay Dambaya and dispose of the 16-year-old's body. He told me he bought me a car. James is listed on the bill of sale, dated the day Dambaya went missing. Police say the car belonged to the brother of James's fiance. How you pay for this car? And so he said he did some work. Work done in Grand Rapids at the same time police say Dambaya was abducted and murdered. He tells me, I don't know Quinn James. Bennett's ex-girlfriend says James also wired her $125 that same week in late January. He told me he was wiring me some money. So when I went to pick up the money, I put his name on there. And so they say that's not the person's name that's on the wire transfer. So now I text him and say, well, whose name is on here? He texts me back a name. What name did he text you? James Quinn. Charged with perjury, a potential life offense, investigators say 58-year-old Bennett told several lies under oath, denying he ever got a car from James. So we knew the two of them had been together um, for at least that 24 to 48 hour period. Police say Bennett did recognize a photo of Dumbaya. He testified that he believed he had. Um, we at one point, I believe, showed him a picture of her and said that he thought that that was a girl that he had seen before when he was with Quinn. And did he say where he saw her? He thought he saw her. He thought he saw her at her bus stop. Dumbaya was last seen walking to the bus stop. Her body found four days later in Kalamazoo with a bus pass still in her pocket. Now, just yesterday, James was arraigned on homicide charges in the abduction and murder of Mujay Dumbaya. Bennett is charged with conspiracy to commit murder, but police tell us more charges could be added on as they continue to learn more. For now, both already face the possible sense of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Reporting live in Grand Rapids, Rachel Glazer, News Channel 3. And we want to take you live over Kalamazoo now through our News Channel 3 Live by camera. Kalamazoo hit 70 degrees today for the first time since October. But will this warming trend continue? It is spring after all. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Keith Thompson in Severe Weather Center 3. Keith? Yeah, I wish I could say that this nice weather that we had today will be sticking around, but we do have some big changes that are coming. In the meantime, not a bad evening to take a stroll. She saw mostly cloudy skies, but the temps continue to be mild. 63 in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek, where we were in the low 70s just a couple of hours ago. Still hanging on to the low 70s in Sturgis and Coldwater, but a little bit cooler in Hastings. And how about only 50s in Allegan and Grand Rapids and only 49 in South Haven? So you need a jacket there along the lakeshore. Live Doppler radar, quiet on our 100-mile scan here. What's ahead for your evening fast cast? Mainly cloudy, breezy. We'll continue to be mild. Temperatures falling through the 50s. We have a big soaker on the way for the weekend. I'll tell you all about it coming up, Andy. All right, Keith, thank you. Consumers Energy says it is mobilizing resources right now to prepare for weekend storms. The company says that heavy-duty equipment is being staged right now in Alma to aid restoration in areas that are expecting high winds, heavy snowfall or thunderstorms. Consumers is reminding all of us to report a power outage as soon as it happens. And of course, News Channel 3 will monitor the weekend's weather around the clock for you. Stay informed on air and online, also through our mobile apps. 
So tonight we're getting an exclusive look at a $70 million development project coming to downtown Kalamazoo. Catalyst Development says the project will offer housing, office space, and parking. News Channel 3's Frankie Thompson joins us live tonight. And Frankie, this building will be home to a very special scholarship program. It certainly will, Kate. The Kalamazoo Promise has awarded more than $108 million to more than 5,200 students. In this parking lot is where that new development will be housed, and directors of the Kalamazoo Promise tell me that new space will help expand their services even more. The Kalamazoo Promise was established 12 years ago. Executive Director Bob Jorth says they've accomplished a lot during that time in this tight space. We have over 1,600 students who have completed their degrees with the Promise. We want to have more of them stay or return to the community. The Promise will soon be headquartered in this $70 million development. It will give the organization the space needed to do more. Expanding our reach to helping students with credential attainment, with job opportunities and internships, as well as going deeper in the community and providing space for those who are competing on very, very important issues such as poverty, such as infant mortality. Catalyst Development is turning that parking lot into a 290,000 square foot mixed use building. It can help give downtown Kalamazoo a little bit of aesthetic appeal, plus it will feature snow melt sidewalks. We're on bus lines. We're in between many of the schools that the students attend already, right across from the Arcadia Festival site. It is a prime spot. These development plans include two floors for residential housing, four floors for office space, and a parking garage, all scheduled to be done by June 2020. Promise directors are already looking towards the future. To engage the families and the students into making the promise a reality, not just getting them to college, but through college and eventually back in jobs in this community. Catalyst Development and its partners will break ground here in July. Reporting live in downtown Kalamazoo, Frankie Thompson, News Channel 3. Well, a woman is hospitalized tonight after police say she became the victim of a random overnight shooting in the Battle Creek area. It happened right in front of Valley View Elementary and prompted Valley and other nearby schools to close for the day. And that's where we find News Channel 3's Mike Kravcik with more on the shooting that we've been following since this morning. Mike. Well, Andy, the shooting happened on this stretch of road. Deputies say a pedestrian took out his gun and fired at a woman who was trying to swerve to get out of his way on this roadway. It sounded like somebody was uh, doing this to the door. Amy Lemons became scared after hearing the rattle at her apartment door. It was moments after a suspect fled after the early morning shooting. My dog was barking. It's really unusual for him to bark at that time. Um, and it sounded like somebody was coming in my, my front door. Right across the street at around 430 this morning, deputies say a man fired several rounds at a woman who swerved to avoid hitting the suspect in the roadway. A subject was in the roadway. She swerved to avoid that subject and the subject ended up firing what we believe is a semi-automatic pistol at her. Deputies say the woman was shot as she drove away, but ended up making it to this gas station. 911 was called. She was eventually taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. I was very lucky I wasn't out here when all this was going on. Wouldn't you consider that lucky? Neighbors were shaken up after what deputies describe as a random shooting. Deputies launched a manhunt. Canine units were brought in to find the suspect. Given the weather conditions at the time, uh, we did not have any luck with the canine track. As a precaution, three nearby schools closed for the day. Police say the suspect isn't a threat to public safety, but Amy Lemons can't be so sure. The uncertainty of is he still in the area? Does he live here? Police are still looking for the suspect at this point. The investigation continues. Live in Springfield, Mike Kravcik, News Channel 3. A unanimous vote is opening the door for hundreds of new jobs in West Michigan. We'll explain. Plus, listening in on your child's conversation could come with a two-year jail sentence. Tonight, details of a new bill that would change that.
Welcome back. The Portage City Council unanimously approves a nearly $500 million property tax break as Pfizer looks to expand in the Kalamazoo area. A vote at this week's City Council meeting opens the door for an exemption that would cut property taxes in half for 15 years. Now, during this time, Pfizer has agreed to keep its 200 employees and make at least 450 new hires. The new facility would be at the corner of Portage and Romans and would be the largest building project ever in Portage. A local man's push to legalize ballot selfies now has a Michigan gubernatorial candidate under fire. But what the I team has learned as that candidate responds to his relationship with a controversial drug. Looking live right now over South Haven. What a mild day it's been today. Sky, skies are mostly cloudy right now. We have big changes coming for the weekend. I'm breaking it down coming up. Welcome back to News Channel 3 Live at 6 on this Thursday evening. I'm Andy Dominiani. And I'm Kate Tillotson. A local man's effort to make ballot selfies legal in Michigan is now potentially spilling over into the gubernatorial race. The I-team obtained a deposition related to that case where candidate Sheree Tanadar's name came up along with some serious accusations. And News Channel 3 investigative reporter Cody Combs is live in the newsroom tonight to tell us why Tanadar's name was brought up in the deposition. Cody. Andy and Kate, not only did Shri Tanadar's name appear in the deposition, but so did a sexual enhancement product. Again, this deposition all came about because of that controversy in Michigan over ballot selfies. Back in 2016, Portage resident Joel Crookston made national headlines when he fought against Michigan's law prohibiting taking pictures inside voting booths. Crookston and his lawyer filed a lawsuit against the state, but the attorney general fought back and Crookston was soon deposed. The I team managed to obtain the full deposition. In it, gubernatorial Democratic candidate Sri Tanadar and a now controversial herbal sex enhancement product called Sex with a Grudge became a topic of conversation. Crookston, while explaining his background, said he worked for Tanadar's company in Ann Arbor, Avamine, which was testing the herbal sex supplement for a client. Of Tanadar, he said, quote, we didn't see eye to eye on quality. There were a couple of instances of things that were questionable to me. Crookston said, referring to the product swag, which includes the slogan, one to hurt it, two to kill it. Quote, we became aware of a client that was putting Viagra into a product, breaking many rules by doing that. Later in the deposition, Crookston says that he wanted to report the problem to the FDA, but added that Tanadar was, quote, not okay with that. So Crookston reported it without Tanadar's knowledge. In response, the FDA sent out this warning that swag contained an ingredient used in Viagra, urging users to throw it away. We reached out to Tanadar, who responded in an email to the I-team, reading in part, quote, Avamine informed the client that it is illegal to sell a product with prescription medicine without proper labeling and FDA approval. Avamine assumed the client will follow its advice. We are similar to a medical doctor. When a patient comes to a doctor, the doctor does not turn the patient to police. My opponents who are down in polls are using such attacks for political purpose. In an interview with the Detroit News, Tanadar said he did recall working with Crookston but didn't remember any specific interactions. We reached out to Joel Crookston, but he has not yet responded to our request to comment for this story. Live in the newsroom, I'm Cody Combs, News Channel 3. A bill that would give parents the freedom to listen in on their kids is moving through the state legislature. That bill has already passed in the House. Currently, eavesdropping on your child is a felony that could lead to up to two years in prison. Eavesdropping is defined as overhearing, recording, amplifying, or transmitting conversations intended to be private. The bill would not allow parents to monitor such conversations with a child and its attorney, a, cu a custody investigator, or if there is a reasonable fear of danger. The bill now heads to the Senate. Well, quiet weather today in West Michigan and largely quiet tomorrow, but we do have a chance for some showers. We have some wild weekend weather on the way. A pretty strong storm is going to be heading here and the potential is there for some heavy rain. We're talking Saturday and Sunday. 
up to two inches of rain and some models suggesting maybe even a little bit more and thunderstorms possible on Saturday. I don't think we'll see any severe weather. Gusty winds that will likely accompany the storm. There could be some power outages and it looks like it could be quite icy north of I-96. So north of Grand Rapids, there could be some ice. We're looking at an impact there from our weekend washout that's high on the rain. And then also with the winds and the possible for power, possibility of power outages. And then ice again, that threat mainly north of Grand Rapids. And in response to that, the National Weather Service already, here it is Thursday, already out with a winter storm watch for the northern half of the lower peninsula here. In our area, we're talking Muskegon, Nuevo, Montcalm, Macosta, Oceana counties. That goes Friday night. That's Friday night through Sunday morning. For most of us here in West Michigan, this is going to be largely a rain event. Let me show you how we're going to go hour by hour. We're starting this clock tomorrow morning at 7, when we already see a couple of showers moving through. Could be looking at some thunderstorms coming through in the afternoon. Again, this is north of Grand Rapids, with mainly cloudy skies for much of the area. Notice a big temperature difference tomorrow afternoon. 49 in Grand Rapids, 67 in Kalamazoo. That cooler air starts to move south. With the wet weather continuing, notice the rain tomorrow night, some thunderstorms, heavy rain Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon. And in fact, look at this, a little rain, snow, sleet mix for Saturday in Grand Rapids, maybe stretching as far south as Kalamazoo. You get the idea. It's going to be rain turning to a messy mix, I think, by Saturday night and into Sunday. Well, right now, our weather is, by contrast, pretty quiet. Mostly cloudy in Kalamazoo and 63 degrees. Let's take a live look right now over Kalamazoo. We've enjoyed a lot of sun today right now. I guess we would call it hazy sunshine. 63 also in Battle Creek, hitting low 70s today in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek for the first time since last October. Still hanging on to 70 in Sturgis, but much cooler in Allegan, Grand Rapids, and South Haven right now, only at 50 degrees. Pretty quiet right now on live Doppler radar. I think later on tonight, after midnight, we could see a few showers. Otherwise, mainly cloudy. Not a bad evening to get outside for a stroll. 47 for your low. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Some scattered showers and storms and a high of 60. Here's your seven day forecast with that weekend washout and a wintry mix on the way for Monday. Kate. Keith, thank you. The Hackett Catholic baseball team hoping to pick up where it left off last season. Now Andy Pepper checks in with the third ranked Irish next in sports. <laughs> thank you. Jordan Zimmerman suffering an unwanted case of deja vu last night in Cleveland. Zimmerman, who had his jaw broken by a line drive during his junior season of college, struck again in the jaw during the first inning of last night's loss to the Tribe. Jason Kipnis, as you're going to see right here, with the liner off the face of Zimmerman, who stayed down for several moments before eventually walking off the field under his own power. Zimmerman, who had 11 screws and several plates put in his mouth after that college injury, Faring much better last night. The right-hander says the swelling in his jaw has gone down, that he doesn't have a headache, and that he plans on making his next start on Tuesday against Baltimore. All right, Jesse Bounds, Hackett Catholic baseball team, looking to continue what has been a fantastic two-season run. The Irish, 53-9 and overall the last couple of seasons, including their first district title since 1978. Hackett, with just 12 total players on this year's team, including a couple of returning First team All-State performers in first baseman Keaton Ashby and outfielder Brendan Warner. The Irish ranked third in the MHS BCA preseason poll, well aware of the bullseye on their back. You know, we're going to see the best of the best and, and we have to be prepared for that. So what we really do is we, we go into every game like it's, uh, it's, it's a, a playoff game and a championship game. So um, that's the focus from our side. It's just got to play loose. I mean, all of us play loose. And we just do well when we're like that. And last year when we faced guys who were throwing harder than what we saw, we did better. It's good because then we face the best competition we can because we're always playing. Everybody's number one. Uh, everybody wants to beat us, so they're always playing the best. And uh, that makes us a better team. Steve Hawkins Broncos announcing the signing of Quebec's William Boye Richard and Chicago's Kiwanis Wilkins to national letters of intent. Boye Richard is a 6'2 guard, a crafty lefty, who averaged over 17 points per game last season for his Montreal High School. Wilkins, a 6'6 Juco transfer, who averaged nearly 15 points per game for Barton Community College, was honored as the conference freshman of the year. Gorgeous weather outside, obviously, so we're gonna have some high school softball, baseball, 
and even rugby highlights for you tonight. Wow. Tonight, yeah. all that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Cool. Ten and eleven, yeah. Well, that gorgeous weather isn't going to be lasting too much longer. Tomorrow we'll likely see some scattered showers and then big rain coming for Saturday and Sunday and turning much colder as well. Hey, take the opportunity this evening and take a little walk around the neighborhood. That's Enjoy. right. Get and outside. don't dread the weekend. Oh. You know, it's going to be rainy, but whatever. Yeah, so what? Yeah. So it was still the weekend. Surely there is something on Netflix you've been meaning to watch yeah. anyways. You can binge. <laughs> we'll see you tonight at 10 and 11.